Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stand. Hope you're doing well. We're going to be talking today about Manchester United's future on the right wing because although we didn't sign Jadon Sancho in that tra tragedy of a transfer window, we did sign two players that can play on the right wing. And who are they? What do they bring for Manchester United? Is it something to get excited about? And is it something that's going to have an immediate impact? Because I think it's very fair to say that when it comes to Traore from Atalanta and Pelestri from Uruguay, people know very little. And, and, and for the, probably one of the first times ever, going on YouTube clips is probably all you've got to do. But what is not in doubt with either of these players is that they are well scouted, they're well thought of. Can they both be Manchester United greats or will they both fall away like many other players that have been brought into Manchester United in the recent past? Well, let's start off with Palestri. There is somebody who is a South American expert. You may have seen him before. Um, his name is Tim Vickery um, over in South America. You'll often hear him on Talk Sport BBC, South American sport expert, uh, football expert. And what he said about Palestri, who's coming over from Uruguay, 18 years of age, he's going to be 19 in December, is that... Very, very good player, but doesn't feel that he will be um, ready for the um, exertion and physicality of the Premier League straight away. It's something that he struggled a little bit over with over in Uruguay, but there's no doubting that he's a talent, which is quite interesting because I think with, between Traore, who was coming in from Atalanta in Italy, and Pelestri, who was coming in from Uruguay, there is a big difference. A um, very similar age group, uh, very similar age, they're both 18, but Traore is only just 18. Palestri is going to be 18 in De uh, 19 in December. But there's a big difference in price as well. €40 million Euros for Traore, around £7 million for Palestri. So Palestri's coming into the team and he's going to be coming over to Manchester United straight away. So is he good enough to go straight into the first team? And I think it's a big, fat no. And I think the expectation should be on the floor with regards to that. What Palestri is, I mean, Tim Vickery has likened him to a sort of David Silva. But, but from what I've read and I think from what we all know, he, he, Palestri is quick. He's direct. He likes to dribble. Um, and that is not really what... Well, maybe David Silva 20 years ago. I don't know. But certainly not anymore. So Manchester United are getting a lad who wants to play on the right. He can play centre attacking midfielder and he can play on the left. But I think what Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is looking at here and what, what our scouting network is looking at here... You think about Sancho, you think about Usman Dembele, and you think about these two lads that we've brought in. There is a recurring theme there. It's speed and the ability to run at people. Now, Jadon Sancho actually doesn't possess blistering pace, but he does like to run at people. And again, with these two lads we've brought in, the key connection and the key thing with both of them is that they're both quick and they both like to run at people. And I think Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is eager and Manchester United are eager to bring this back to Manchester United. I think when Rashford's running at full speed, Martial's running at full speed, this is what gets people off their seat. And United just don't have that, whether it's Juan Mata, Andres Pereira, Jesse, Jesse Lingard, Dan James, they just don't have that ability to run at a player and skip past the player. Dan James is very quick. Matter is very uh, intricate in the way he can control a ball and move and change direction. You know, if you could combine one matter with Dan James, you'd have a very good player. And I think that's what Oli and Man United are trying to combine with both these players, both Palestri and Traore. Their standout um, attributes are the ability to run at a player quickly. And I think that's what United are looking for. So with Palestri, he's going to be the first player that comes into Manchester United, as I said. And whether he, I mean, what his impact can be, I think hopefully we'd be looking at getting him maybe on the bench, getting him up to speed, but certainly not as a first teamer. I mean, look, Jaden Sancho, Usman Dembele, whatever the right wing we, we could have gone for, you'd be looking at a player, even an Ishmael Saar, you'd be looking at a player that's knocking on that door straight away because, and I don't want Saar, by the way, but you're looking at a player that goes straight into the team or competes to be in the team. I don't think we're going to get that with Palestri. Um, I think what we're going to get is a player that comes in, maybe plays you know, a few minutes here and there in, in, in some of the Champions League games or the, or the Carabao Cup games, probably not the Champions League, to be fair. And I think expectations with this one is probably a little bit lower than they are with uh, Traore, who, who isn't going to come into January. But it's going to be interesting. If he's been well scouted and he can adapt to the league, and of course he can adapt to a new country. And look, I don't know. I, I'm not a big fan of the Cavani deal. I really am not. But I just wonder whether... And look, United's... United couldn't plan a picnic, so I'm not saying they have done this, but it may not be a bad thing that Cavani, you know, iconic Uruguayan, is at the club and a young Uruguayan is coming over to Manchester for the first time. Hopefully that is going to work out. And I don't think United have planned it. 
You know, I do not think they've planned it, but that should help him settle into the club. Um, and I think we are a very welcoming club anyway. So, look, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Palestri. But I'm not expecting big things. I mean, look, he's got he's played 30 games. He's got one goal. One of the one of the things that has been said about him, he, he needs to work on his final products. But he is 18. I think that's very important. I didn't like it yesterday when people were saying, oh, he's a player that can go straight into the mix. He's not. I mean, look, I've not watched him play. I haven't. But, you know, I've, I've listened to people. I've, I've researched on him and people who have watched him play. Even if I hadn't. It's not fair to expect an 18-year-old to go straight into your first team and tear it up. I mean, look, Dan James came into the team last year. We were very patient. Dan James was 21. This is an 18-year-old from Uruguay who's barely played any football. But look, let's see how he goes. The second player we're going to look at is, of course, Ahmad Traore. Now, this is the more exciting one, really. We're paying 40 million euros, potentially, for this lad. 20 million up front and 20 million in add-ons. He is a player that really, um, you know, I mean, look, the, the thing I would say about Ahmed Traore is he, you've got people who train with him who say that he's like Messi in training. Well, look, we've all been on a night out and met a, a girl who looks like a porn star on the dance floor and, me, and then she's not in the bedroom. And you know, I say girl, it could be a boy, let's be equal. But you know what I mean? You know, not everything in training is what it's like on the football pitch. So I'm not, I, I think... You know, these stories, we've all heard these stories over the year. Oh, is, is, is the next Ronaldo? Is the next Messi? He's amazing in training. He's, he puts it in the top corner every every day in training. And then when he gets on the football pitch, he's putting it in the corner flag. So, look, uh, this is a this is an exciting player. I've heard it before. We've, we've spoken about him a couple of weeks on the channel. United have done something here with Palestri as well, but also with Triori. They've done something here that we've always wanted them to do. They've started, you know, it's not Tony Glover from Port Vale and it's not... Jimmy Smith from West Ham. It's not Brexit FC anymore. These are two players coming in. And, 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 I, and I think that to me is the big, big positive on this. And I think we should be happy about this is that we are, we've mentioned it on this channel a lot, this European scouting network, but this is a global scouting network. You know, we were always very British centric and now we've brought in two lads, one from Uruguay, one from, you know, Atalanta in Italy. It's not even like it's Juventus or anything like that. It's not obvious. There's, it demonstrates the scouting network. And I've always felt this about United Scouting Network. People say we've got a bad scouting network. I just think we haven't listened to it. And up until now, I don't think we've listened to it. I think, you know, we have been linked to people like Alfonso Davies. We've had ex-scouts who said, I recommended this player, this player. So, you know, De Ligt was another one. So this is good from Manchester United. They, you know, out of the two of them, they both might fail. They both might be brilliant. They both might be average. But hopefully we will get out of one of these two players a real future Manchester United star. And Traore looks exciting. Again, he's hardly played any games. He's only played three senior games for Atalanta. Scored on his debut, I think. Um, hasn't started a game this season. But he's he's highly touted as being a very, very talented player for the future. Um, again, he, I mean, the, the difference with him is that he's two-footed. Um, so he can play left or right, but quick. Likes to run at people. Got an, got, got, actually has got an end product. But the thing with Traore is he's not coming in until January. And when he comes in in January... Where will United be in January? Will will Ali still be in charge? Some people think not. Will we we'll be in a race for top four? Will we will we, will the fans be pissed? Off? You know, you don't know what situation he's coming into. I think Palestri's coming into a hard situation. I think Traore comes into an even more difficult position in the in the middle of the season. And I would say that with Traore, again, he's only just eighteen. He'll be eighteen and a half when he comes to the club. I think you're looking more next season. And and to be honest with you, it wouldn't surprise me with both these players if next summer we saw them both go out on loan. So we mustn't be you know, saying all oh, these players are for now. I think Man United are probably trying to steer us in the direction that they are for now because we didn't get the player we wanted. You know, we wanted Sancho, we didn't get him. We desperately, desperately panicked and tried to get Usman Dembele. These two lads, are, are, for me, I mean, when we were talking about Ahmed Traore a week or two ago, he was never an alternative to Sancho. He was a young player that United really liked the look of. And with Palestri, I feel that that's the same. I don't think these players are players that are come in and be our right winger and that's why we've got a massive hole out on the right wing and it would be very unfair as of us as fans to expect that if they can do that look Ronaldo came over from Sporting Lisbon but look Ronaldo's gen he's not even generation he's, he's a universal talent he's, he, you know that, that that doesn't come around very very often so to expect either of these two to just drop into United shirt and start skinning Premier League defenders and and becoming the world's next superstar that's what we hope but I think we're going to have to be patient. And remember, Ronaldo came into a very different Manchester United side and he was managed by Sir Alex. Under Ollie, you know, will Ollie chuck them in? Um, there's good and bad to that. But look, I think they're both exciting players. I think they're both exciting because we don't really know 
much about them. I've heard people saying, well, Traore is the better player, but you don't know that. Do you follow Uruguayan, Uruguayan football? Do you know who's going to adapt better? Um, it is exciting. They're both exciting players, and I hope that they're both going to achieve. But look, the reality is there's always risk with these sort of deals, and they're certainly not Sancho alternatives or Dembele alternatives. They're young players that are coming over that are going to need time, and everybody's saying that. They're, they're, they're ones for the future. They're going to need time. You know, injuries are always a problem with young players, loss of form, they dip. So they're at that age group of 18 where you just don't know. But hopefully, hopefully, um, the positive for me is not that they're, you know, I don't I don't even liken these to the Sancho fiasco. I, li I liken these to good scouting networks where we've gone and got players that aren't British, that are well thought of, that are well scouted, and we've brought them to Manchester United. And that to me is a positive. And I think we need to do more and more of this because there are some fantastic talents out there. And I don't I know it doesn't help us in relation to patience, but I want Manchester United to be a football club that creates its own talents. You know, I want our own Alfonso Davies. I want our own Delit. I don't want to have to go and get Sancho from Dortmund for 100 million. That's why I wanted us to, I wanted us to get Bellingham from Birmingham because Bellingham might well end up paying for Manchester United, but we'll end up paying for it big time when we go to Dortmund. I want us to do what Dortmund do. I want us to scout and get the players in because Many clubs have been doing this for a long time now. Leipzig, um, Dortmund, obviously, and there's a few others. And we need to be on that page. And I think United are trying to do that. And, it, and it's good that we are trusting our scouts. So there you go. That's the story so far with uh, Fasunda, Palestri and Ahmed Traore. Who do you think is going to be good? Do you think they're ready yet? Or do you think it's going to take a bit of patience? Thanks everyone for watching. Smash a like on the video and subscribe if you are new.